In this video, I'll be going over Olivier Messiaen's modes of limited transposition. Uh, these are modes that Messiaen used in his music, and there's some in particular that uh, a lot of composers have sort of adopted for their own work, and some of them existed before Messiaen uh, sort of defined them as these modes, uh, and uh, but he's sort of the first one to sort of uh, call them a, a mode of limited transposition. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, why they are called a mode of limited transposition. So one might ask, what does this really mean? And especially when it comes to labeling things like harmony and harmonic progressions or you know, labeling what scale is being used in any moment. When we think back to when we first learned how the 12 notes of the octave is divided into different scales and modes. If we think about like the major scale, there is a major scale based on every tone of the 12 notes, right? So we have C major, C sharp major, D major, D sharp major. Well, and then of course we don't write D sharp major, right? Cause that would be a lot of sharps. Instead we write the anharmonic E flat major. So when it comes to um, any kind of scale or mode, we want to look at the collection of uh, steps, whole steps and half steps that are in it. So in this case, uh, if we look at Messiaen's mode number one, this is also known as a whole tone scale. We can see that uh, we've taken the 12 notes of the octave and just divided it all into even whole steps. So here we have a scale, scale starting on C, then D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then we come back to C. So you'll notice that because we have seven note names um, in our Western uh, pitch system, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, uh, but we have a six tone scale, because if we take 12 notes, so 12 half steps, and make them into uh, six whole steps, we end up having at some point in a scale like this, somewhere a diminished third. So we have a diminished third from A sharp back to C natural. Here's another, uh, in fact, the other whole tone scale starting on D flat or C sharp. So in this case, D flat, E flat, F, G, A, B, and then D flat. We could also spell this as C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, B, and then C sharp. Here are the only two whole tone scales that really exist. Uh, one that starts on C, and then one, one that starts on C sharp or D flat. If we look at this, we can see that it is also a whole tone scale. E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, C, D, and back to E. And so when we compare this scale, starting on E, to the scale that starts on C, and we move the scale, and we just move the E up here, we can kind of see that the notes are exactly the same. And so a whole tone scale starting on E has exactly the same pitches, the same six notes, as a whole tone scale starting on C. So when we go back and look at our whole tone scales, basically, uh, we, you know, if a whole tone scale starts on C or D or E or F sharp or G sharp or A sharp, those all belong to the same whole tone scale collection. Uh, and for the sake of um, just labeling these, uh, since there really are two whole tone scales, what we'll do in our class is if there's a whole tone collection that uses the notes C, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, we're, we're going to refer to this as a C whole tone scale. And if it starts on C sharp, D sharp, F, G, A, and B, we'll refer to this as the whole tone scale starting on C sharp. When we dig deeper into analysis, though, we might find that um, 
the whole tone scale. Maybe, maybe it's centered on E and that's okay and we want to focus on that. We might talk about that in analysis. Um, but in general, what we want to do is focus on one of these two whole tone scales when we talk about it in a, thir in a, in a theoretical sense. Another scale or mode that Messiaen uses a lot is his mode two, which is also known as, known as the octatonic scale. And so this is an A-tone scale now. And so we'll notice with this that we actually have a repeated note somewhere because we have eight tones uh, instead of the normal seven. So in this case, we have C, D flat, E flat, E natural. So there's the two repeated uh, note names, but you know, uh, E flat and E natural. Um, then F sharp, G, A, B flat, and then back to C. So we can see that um, if we look at the whole steps or half steps that are present in this scale, we can see there's a half step from C to D flat. There's another half step from E flat to E, another one from F sharp to G, and finally another half step from A to B flat. And we can see that there's a whole step between e, uh, D flat and E flat, another whole step between E and F sharp, another whole step between G and A, and finally another whole step between B flat and C. So when we look at this scale, in terms of whole steps and half steps, we see that it alternates half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, and whole step. Here is the octatonic scale now starting on C sharp, and same idea here is that it starts with a half step and goes whole step and continues in that order half whole half whole half whole half whole here's the same scale now but starting on d and we can see again the same collections of half steps and whole steps starting d to e flat as a half step e flat to f whole step etc and if we go up another half step and we start on D sharp. Here is the octatonic scale starting on D sharp, starting with a half step, then a whole step, etc. If I compare the scale that starts on D sharp with the one that starts on C, we'll notice that the first two notes of the scale, the octatonic scale that starts on D sharp, is the same as the third and fourth note of the octatonic scale that starts on C. And so similar to when we looked at a whole tone scale, if I start a, an octatonic scale starting on D sharp, we'll see that it has all the same notes as the octatonic scale starting on C. So the, an octatonic scale starting on C natural and an octatonic scale starting on D sharp or E flat belong to the same scale. They have the same pitches. And so we, we think about this as belonging to the same octatonic collection of notes. So when we look at different modes of the octatonic scale, one starting on C, one starting on C sharp, one starting on D, another one starting on D sharp, and we realize that D sharp had the same notes, it's the same collection of notes as C, that we only have three octatonic scales starting on C, starting on C-sharp, and then starting on D. And then everything after that, all the scales starting on other notes, will replicate one of these three modes. Uh, and so that's what we mean by a mode of limited transposition, is that we only have really three transpositions of this scale until we get the same pitches duplicated. Now, it's not to say that we can't have a, a different pitch center and so I might write, you know, we might come across some music that uses the C octatonic mode, but maybe it's, you know, it's centered around F sharp or A natural. That's okay, but we will refer to this as the C octatonic scale. So if I look at the octatonic scale that starts on G natural, what I can do is first look at the first uh, half step, the G to A flat, and see if I see it somewhere else in one of the other two, or one of the other three octatonic modes. And I can see that there is a G and A flat in the octatonic scale starting on C sharp. 
And if I look at the next note, A flat to B flat, or that next interval, A flat to B flat, sure enough, there it is. And so the G octatonic scale is the same scale as the C sharp octatonic. And so it belongs to the same collection. If I look at an octatonic scale starting on A natural, again, I look for the first two notes, the A and the B flat, and I see that it's uh, those same two notes are in the C octatonic scale. If I look at the next two notes, the C and the C sharp, I see that those are also the next two notes in the C octatonic scale. Something just Im that's important here is that notes that are enharmonically equivalent are the same notes. So C sharp is the same as D flat, E flat is the same as D sharp. So it still belongs to the same collection here. So even so, in this case, the octatonic scale that starts on A has a C sharp and a D sharp written, it still belongs to the same C natural octatonic scale. So one thing that we can do is when we label these in our analysis, uh, we can simply write that it's mode two and starting on C. So you can just put two dash C when we're uh, analyzing uh, an octatonic scale. Uh, you know, another thing you can do is you can just write octatonic dash C as well. Uh, but for our cases for right now, I think just writing two dash C or mode two dash C is fine. Here is our G octatonic again. And remember this scale was exactly the same pitches as the C sharp octatonic. So if we discovered this scale in, in an, an analysis, we could simply write it 2 dash, 2 dash C sharp. And that will indicate uh, the octatonic mode that's being used in that particular section. So I hope you find this helpful uh, in terms of how the octatonic scale works and why there are only three octatonic scales and two whole tone scales and this whole concept of uh, modes of limited transposition and how to label them and how to find them.